We're here at the old General Radio plant in Concord, Massachusetts, in the new cafeteria called the Hangar Cafe. Airplanes are the motive. Which used to be the stockroom, three stories high, looked just like a Home Depot store. That's correct. Is oh, that right? And we're here with our former president, Bill Thurston, William R. Thurston, with the R standing for Robert. Oh, that ain't bad. <laughs> so I named my youngest son Bob. Good, wow. good. So, Bill, as I recall, you graduated from MIT in 1943. 1943. Were you a co op? Yes. Yes, in 1940, I interviewed Charlie Burke and Harold Richmond. Richmond. Uh, along with a lot of other MIT people. And General Radio told MIT that they wanted two. And they, they wanted two people out of the four people that they accepted. I was number four. Uh oh. But the first three did not accept their offer, so I got in. Good. Where were you living? At the MIT Student House. Okay. But I couldn't afford to live anywhere else. Sure, but you had grown up where? I was born in Brooklyn. Brooklyn. And uh, grew up in Stamford, Connecticut. Okay. And then we went bankrupt, lost our house. Oh, God. What did your father do? What was it? He was... Um, he used to advertise stocks and sell stocks. He kind of an early, he was doing very well, yeah. but then doing nothing after that. And so we didn't have any place to live. But my aunt, who was working as a needlepoint designer in New York City, had built a house in Darien, Connecticut. A nice one, three bedrooms. And she was gay, and her partner was. I didn't know what that meant in sure, those days. Sure, sure. Right. I wish I could see her now and tell her it was all right. Yeah, yeah. But at any rate, uh, she, uh, she took us in, my mother and my brother and my dog. My brother is 12 years younger, and he has a 12 acres in Hollywood Cove, Alaska. Wow. He's running a, an operation there, which has a lodge and cottages, and they have corporate people coming for special things. And it's really quite something, and if anyone is interested in looking, they can check it on the, the website, which is stillpointlodge.com. Wow. All right, jumping ahead now, we got you as a co-op student at General Radio. Yes. Doing what and working for who? Well, first I was working for Fred Howland in the receiving room. And um, right here, someplace. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, no, Cambridge. No, that You're was in Cambridge. Cambridge. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And my job in the receiving room was to open packages, see what the, who was to get them, and then deliver them all around the plant. Yeah. Great stuff. I love that first. And then I was in that whole that whole summer. I was in seven departments. Wow. The longest one was in winding. Yeah. Five weeks. Yeah. Ray Searle was the foreman. Yep. And one hot day when it was, I was having a lot of trouble, the wire kept going off the edge yeah. of, the, of the paper. It was so cool. Yep. He brought me a delicious peach. He thought I might enjoy it. <laughs> now, that was an act of kindness. Now, I was also in uh, receiving inspection. Um, happy, happy Wade? Bill Lewis. Bill Lewis. Who used to do the happy dance. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, one time, the incoming part to be inspected was a chef, a big light chef. Yeah. And I didn't know how to resect except sure, reject, reject. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I went up to where I had worked before to talk to Warren Newell, who I knew assembled those. Big Warren, tenor. And I asked him his opinion as to, yeah. are they good or not? Charlie Burke came to see me later and he said, 
That's not the way it's done. He <laughs> said, you should have reported that to Bill. To Bill Lewis? Lewis, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's how I learned. <laughs> so then you went up to engineering? Uh, Future co-op well, terms. The second, the second laboratory. The second one was a laboratory. In the lab. Everett Lewis was calibrating those LR1 yeah. things. Yeah. And I had the job of preparing five DC amplifiers, which Martha Bousquet had at the time, for a, work, a shipment to Russia. Oh boy. And it was very hard because you had to select vacuum tubes and get just the right ones yeah. so that it, the meter would be accurate. I remember Fred Howland coming to me once. He said, look, he said, those will probably get shot shot down by a German submarine on the way over, so don't spend so much time. <laughs> but I didn't want to do that. I no, of course not. I didn't do that. Of course not. So um, anyway, that was a good experience. I remember I, uh, I calibrated 50. Wave analyzers, 736A. 736, wave the big, yeah, big thing. Big thing with the knob. I calibrated yeah. 50 of those, so I really knew how to do it. Yeah, I thought it took two guys to do that, because it used no. to be Joe Belcher and uh, King David. Dave King used to do it as a pair, I remember. I, I did it myself. Yeah. And several years later, when I was in the New York office, I visited a company called the United Transformer Company. Yeah. And they had had one that they had shipped back in those days. Yeah. They'd never unpacked it. Never unpacked it. Great. <laughs> so I offered to unpack it and check it out for them. Yeah. And it worked. It worked fine. Great. But let's see. Were you in engineering after that? Because the way it was with yeah, me. The third, the, the third the cooperative third. term was in engineering yeah. under Don Sinclair. Yeah. And Henry Littlejohn was assigned to show me where the men's room was, and yeah. where the stock room was, and how yeah. to do things. So Don Sinclair and I started our relationship. Many years of arguments. Many years, yeah. Remember, we were trying to make a, a VHF voltmeter, and we were trying to make a semiconductor. Detector. Semiconductor. With with uh, yeah with uh, a cat whisker and a oh and okay a crystal. okay crystal yeah but we wanted to make it so it would be permanent so yeah we're putting clip tall clip and glue it together and then had to bake it but it never worked <laughs> so I remember one at one time I said to Don I said haven't they figured out how to do this and he said who's they yeah <laughs> right right. I learned a lot from him. But you worked directly for him? Yeah. Yeah. Who else did we have then? We had uh, Clapp, Jim Arnold, Clapp. Arnold Peterson. Arnold Peterson, Jim Clapp. Yeah. And then, how did you get into sales? What happened there? Well, um, we didn't call it marketing then, did no. we? One, no, we didn't. One day, for some reason, I went down to see Arthur Thiessen was head of sales in those days. Yeah. And I said... The nephew of Melville yeah, East Ham. I'd like to know Melville. what sales is. And he I forget what he told me, but he told me something. <laughs> now that may have given him the idea, I don't know. But later than that, Frank Lewis was in sales. Was he? Yeah, they gave us some kind of a test. And that, after that test was done, they thought maybe I would be better in sales, huh. and Frank Lewis would be better in engineering. Wow. So we swapped. Wow. But I remember back many years later when I moved out of sales into marketing, Ivan Easton made what I thought was at the time was a very funny comment, although I realized it was kind of an insult. He said both departments were improved. <laughs> yeah, 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 I remember the line. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> that, was, that was a good one. So you went to New York, and as I recall the story, it was George Ross was there? Yeah, and Ivan, he, Ivan had been the New York manager. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. And he left, 
And I couldn't go down right away, so George Ross went down about three months before me. And then I went down, and no one ever told me that I was the manager. Yeah, I remember that story. Neither one of you knew who the boss was. Yeah, yeah so it was probably a good thing. And your secretary. What was uh -huh. her? Your secretary down there, what was her? Mary Arms. Wow. Wow. Mary Arms. Yeah. Mary Arms. She married a furniture salesman named Williamson. <laughs> nice guy. He had a Jaguar. Oh boy. And they bought a case of wine and she had to carry it on her lap. Oh boy. At any rate, I, <laughs> Pat, my second wife, Pat, and I went to see Marion. Oh, no kidding. Marion Williamson in Burlington, Vermont. Wow. Visited with her one night. Wow. She, she looked fine. Yeah. But anyway, how many years were you down there? Three, four, five. Five years. Yeah, that was before they built the World Trade Center. Oh. And our building was the Brady Building overlooking the Hudson River and the Colgate Clock. Wow. And I used to commute from Teaneck yeah. down the river in the, Hack in the Teaneck in the Hackensack Ferry. Wow. No, the Teaneck Ferry. Good years. Whatever it was. Now, when did you get married? 1948. Okay. And we moved to New York in 1950. Yeah, yeah. And then in 55, we moved back to Harvard. Yeah, and that, were we here then? No. We were still in Cambridge. Yes, so for yeah. three years I had to commute from Harvard, from Harvard to Cambridge. Yeah. And I remember usually I had quite a few engineers with me on the way back. I dropped them off in Belmont. Oh, gee, were you in that? Oh, gee, that and yeah. Dick Frank. Dick Frank, yeah, Canantum, the guys who lived in Canantum, right. yeah. yeah. Yep. And then we moved out here in 50, 58. 58. Yeah. Okay, I came back from the Army in 56. That's when I first you met you. You were in Cambridge, right? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you were across the hall from me in Cambridge, the third floor, right next to Jim Glapp. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and Dick. Fr well, first I worked for the Iron Duke, Copless. Oh, did you? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The Iron Duke. He was a good person. Yeah, yeah. I liked him. I liked him. There's a joke. You are not paid to think. <laughs> you know, there's a joke. It was popular during the Kennedy years, where you'd say something just in such a brief, and the the person you were teasing had to come up with a question to which that would be the answer. Yeah. And there's a route called 9W, which runs along the Hudson River. And that was the question, 9W. And the answer was, do you spell your name with a V, Dr. <laughs> Wagner? 9W. Nine, I love it. I remember that. I love it. Yeah, good. So anyway, wherever we got you now, you're, uh, you're over in marketing. You're over in the other building. Yeah. Um, Marion Grothier, yep. Or no, she's later when, when you were president. Uh, I was, yeah. no, in New York. In New York, I kept coming up with ideas for new products. Okay. Some of which were good, yeah. but some of which weren't. Well, all right. Um, anyway, they decided that they wanted somebody to do market research. Sure because some of the new products coming along we weren't sure about. Sure. And who are you working for? Uh, Thiessen? Thiessen. Yeah, Myron... Myron uh, Smith. Ran sales. He was the sales manager. Yeah. I remember when I was sent to New York, I asked Myron whether I was going to be the manager or not. And he never actually Didn't, told me. That's it was right. a lot of words. Yeah, that was Byron. <laughs> I think what he was really saying was, well, we'll see. We'll I'll see. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he was pretty good. I remember but Myron. About three years later, Arthur Thiessen made the comment to me. He said, well, George Ross came down ahead of you. Your assistant preceded you, right? That's when I knew. That I knew. <laughs> but there were just three of us. George, yeah. Mary, William, Mary Arms, and you. And me. Yeah. And I didn't know what a manager was. Yeah. And so I just made sure we all agreed on everything. Sure. Yeah, and consensus. Yeah. I, think I, yeah. I decided that's the way management should yeah. be. Yeah. 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 So anyway. And let's see, where we got you now? We got you in market research. 
Yeah, I had Bob Boole as an assistant. Yeah, yeah. And um, Dick Rogers. Dick Rogers. Yeah, yeah Dick he Rogers worked for Boole. Yeah, yeah. Boole was later. Yeah, yeah. I'd forgotten that. Right. And then what happened? Let's see. You became. Oh. I remember one day in 1966. Don Sinclair walked into my office and said, we have just elected you a vice president of planning. Planning. And you know what my said? I said, what's planning? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he looked at me, disgusted look, and said, planning, and walked out. Yeah, yeah. That was my start as yeah, a, yeah. an yeah. officer. Yeah, that was. <laughs> and then two years later, it was marketing, and Thiessen yeah. retired. Yeah. And he wanted Leo Chamberlain to yeah. succeed him. What was Leo then? He had come back from New York. He was out in, He's in sales. Sales, yeah. 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 And, uh... But he replaced Myra. Don Sinclair didn't want him. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I got the job. Yeah. And Leo came to me and said, I'll work for you and you're the boss. I didn't know what that meant. But yeah. Yeah. He was really smart. Yeah. Yeah, Navy guy. He was out of the terrific, Navy. Uh, Cornell. Personality, yeah. yeah, Cornell. Yeah. 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 We had Dave Friedley here a while back on a trip out. You remember Friedley? Yes. Yeah, he was uh, Leo, I guess, hired him out of Cornell or something. That's right. Yeah, go ahead. Leo. Go ahead, answer it. I'll, I'll pause. 